Well, Harry and Meghan have demanded a royal apology for the claims made in their Netflix documentary. The six-hour wine thon launched blistering attacks on Britain and the British monarchy. And the palace is reportedly baffled by the request. They're not the only ones. And as if we haven't suffered enough, tonight Netflix released a new trailer for another Harry and Meghan show. This one promises to be just as smug as the first one. This was inspired by Nelson Mandela, who once said, what counts in life is not the mere fact that we have lived. It is what difference we have made to the lives of others that will determine the significance of the life we lead. It's about people who have made brave choices. To fight for change and to become leaders. And giving inspiration to the rest of us. To live, to lead. It's unbelievable, isn't it? I mean, every time I think they can't plummet new depths, these two, they're now comparing themselves to Nelson Mandela, who spent nearly 30 years in a six-by-six -six prison cell. Really? He went on to become the first black president for South Africa, a unifying leader of true greatness, one of the, well, actually the, the most impressive person I've ever interviewed in my life. They are comparing their dash for freedom to a mansion in California where they now hawk out their royal titles for hundreds of millions of dollars. <laughs> That's what Mandela did in their eyes? Well, to me, it's unbelievable. But maybe there are some out there that, that believe this stuff. Joining me now is the author and activist Natalie Collins, the former head of Royal Protection, Di Davis, and Talk TV contributor Esther Cracker. Well, let me start with you, Esther. You've been waiting patiently here. <laughs> um, they're the new Mandela, apparently, yeah, apparently, combined. I just find it... The arrogance is incredible to demand an apology because that's how you get an apology, by demanding one, a sincere and honest and open apology. I, I, I just think, you know, they officially declared war on the royal family by coming out with this Netflix documentary. They made it clear that they wanted no re reconciliation because you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't put your family through that if you really wanted right. open, genuine conversation and reconciliation. But also, they just called Prince Charles a, a lying bully. Yeah. They've called... Prince William, even worse. Uh, even worse. So they drove him out of the country yeah. uh, with his. Or he drove them out of the country with his bullying and lies. Uh, they've called the whole family a bunch of racists. Why would you but... even want apology from someone, people like that, that well, are so negative in your view? Well, I think I can understand why they're demanding apology because they're so self-righteous about everything. They assume they're right about everything. I can't understand what on earth makes them think Charles and William would even consider yeah. being in the room with them right now. But I do think there's an element of the longer that they can keep this feud going, that's more money in their bank account because now everything they do, they'll just be like, oh, but what about William? How's your relationship with the royal family? How's your relationship right. with your father? And so that's... It's basically, you know, a giant cheque that they've... Blank cheque they've signed How could you forever. trust them not to just basically record everything that goes on if they did have a meeting like that? Well, let me, they would. Let me go to Natalie Collins. Natalie, I'm aware there are people out there that completely disagree and think that they are true freedom fighters who were oppressed by the royal family and have taken their oppression now to this vast mansion in Montecito in Santa Barbara. It's a beautiful place. I've been down to that area. Lovely. Rolling ocean waves. Beautiful lifestyle. Um, not my idea of what oppression looks like, but there we are, each to their own. Um, but let's get to this idea of an apology, that you can basically call a family a bunch of callous racists who refuse to let you get help for suicidal thoughts that you said you, you, said you had that uh, made racist comments, apparently, that were so demeaning you had to allude to them on an Oprah Winfrey interview. Uh, you now call them a bunch of lying bullies, including the new king. Why would you expect anybody to sit down with you and apologise after you've done all the public trashing? I think in the context of a column that was written today by Jeremy Clarkson, which uh, described Meghan Markle as worse than Rose West and, and calling on people to have her stripped naked and throw excrement on her in the street, I think it's really important that we put the context of um, what Meghan and Harry are talking about in the context of the wider hatred, which, to be fair, you were uh, a real pioneer in that hatred of Meghan Markle years ago, years before I don't hate uh, Meghan Jeremy Markle. Clarkson wrote I don't, no, 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 hang on. I think it's, hang on, hang on. Well, I mean, I, I, you, well, hang you, on, you have Natalie. made a career you said I hate Meghan Markle. Let me be clear. I've never said I hate Meghan Markle. I don't hate Meghan Markle. I hate what she's done to the royal family and to the monarchy and to the reputation of Britain. Only tonight, the New York Times has carried a major op-ed piece absolutely trashing this country 
as a racist country with a racist institution at the head of it, a callous institution that should be dismantled. So, yeah, I see real damage in what Meghan Markle and Harry have both done now to the reputation of his country and to our monarchy. So, yeah, but I don't hate them individually as people. And if, you know, in relation to the Clarkson column, which he's now issued a mere culpa over, I didn't think he should have uh, put that in the column, for, for my personal view. But he's now said he wishes he hadn't either. So, you know, I don't see what that has to do with the wider picture of these two trashing their families and now demanding an apology. Well, I think in the same way that you're saying you don't personally hate them, but you are opposed to what they stand for and what they're saying and how they've behaved, I think that's entirely the same argument that um, Meghan and Harry are making in their in their documentary and in the work that they've they've done, is saying that actually the way that they've been harmed by this institution, by this system, which, you know, we cannot deny the impact of colonialism, we cannot deny the impact of this um, monarchy in terms of... We, we have a history in this country of doing really terrible things for the places and to deny that reality, to deny the impact of, and, and the reality of this, this, mon this monarchy, how is it that in this day and age we have a group of people who are born into wealth and privilege just because of being born into it? It is absolutely They're also responsible for developing the Commonwealth. That is the norm. They're also responsible for developing the Commonwealth, which has been one of the great success stories in the world. And of course, it's, well, it's complete... not really Commonwealth, though, is it? The people who've got that wealth are mainly in uh, the royal family. Have a lot more. So wealth you hate them because the they've got the money. So presumably, by that, by that yardstick, if you hate people who've got lots of money without actually earning or deserving it, you must also hate, therefore, the Sussexes who've done nothing to deserve it other than trash their family. Well, I just. I... I think, you know, I, I I think there's a sense that, of course, people, we, we can't, like, hate people because of their privilege, but the, what they're doing with it or you, how they're utilising it is really important as well. And I think there is a sense that we are also talking about a, a man who, as a boy, his mother was killed by a baying mob in the media and then was, Actually, no, that's you not know, true. grew I'm up sorry. to have a wife I'm sorry. who was, again, was also again, look, attacked are easy, by a baying mob. These are easy lies to say on television. But I'm afraid I have to hold you to account but on it. It's them. not a lie that his mother Princess was killed. Princess Diana was not it? killed by a baying it's not a mob. Lie. Princess Diana was killed by a drunk driver. That was the official inquest report into her death. It was a drunk driver speeding who killed Princess Diana. So it wasn't yeah, a in the baying context mob of that a killed media her. Well, you might want it to be a baying mob. And maybe Harry has grown up thinking it was a baying mob. I could tell a hundred stories about the way his mother colluded with me as a newspaper editor with the paparazzi or colluded with me over having a private lunch at Kensington Palace, giving me loads of stories, which she knew I would then have as informed information for my newspaper. I could tell the time that Diana uh, rang me up and gave me an hour-long interview about a visit to a clinic she'd done, uh, signed off on every page of the interview... Uh, which was faxed to her and returned with her initials on it, and the next day said she was outraged by the intrusive story in the Daily Mirror, which was the story she'd given me at length over an hour on tape. So there are lots of different ways you can skin this cat about the relationship between the royal family and the media. My argument about, about Meghan and Harry is they apparently were so disgusted by this callous, racist family and institution that they fled the country gave up royal duty, now live in California in extreme luxury, and yet, bizarrely, they still want to retain the titles afforded them by the institution that they describe as callous racist, and they use those titles to make themselves stinking rich without doing any work. I think that's hypocrisy. Let's go to Di Davis. Well, Di Davis. sounds like the rest of the royal family, really. I mean, well, not really, because they do hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of duties much, a year. Well, they turn up at a hundred, you know, in three, four hundred events a year, uh, the main royals. So they actually do put back. That's the whole point of the royal family. They don't just get paid for nothing. They give back. Di Davis, you were uh, hel helping to run security of the royal family for many years. What do you make of this? I mean, I, I read this New York Times piece tonight with a real sinking feeling in my heart, that actually the relentless attacks by Meghan and Harry are beginning to really stick in other parts of the world uh, about our country and about our monarchy. Well, good evening. A very good friend of mine defined ethical. Being ethical means knowing what is right and having the courage to do what is right. 
As a former policeman, what I haven't seen one iota so far is evidence. And unfortunately, people like Clarkson give grease to the story. He doesn't represent you, he doesn't represent me, and he doesn't represent 99% of this country. I take great umbrage as being classified quite often as a police officer or an ex-police officer as racist. I resent it, and I resent those who have the audacity to actually come out with this palatable nonsense with little or no evidence. Uh, the whole issue, if they gave that 100 million to charity, I'd have more respect, but I don't think they have. No, and you know what, Di? I get called a racist all day long on social media now as a direct result of Meghan Markle levering me out of my former job, in which she basically inferred if you didn't believe her about everything, you must be a racist. I don't have a racist bone in my body, nor have I ever said anything racist about Meghan Markle. No one can find anything I've said. And yet, it got so ridiculous, even Sharon Osbourne was fired from a job she loved in America because she said I was entitled to my opinion and for that she was called a racist sympathiser. This is how mad it's got. But this is the damage that's done. The royal family right now in America are perceived by many people to be callous racists without any, as you say, Di, any actual evidence to support any of these claims. And, you know, I mean, Di, on a wider point, where does this leave the monarchy? What should they do? I mean, the, the historic position of the current family is you just don't respond to this kind of thing. But it, are we reaching the point, and I always think that never complain, never explain is a good mantra, the Queen, Queen Mother's mantra for being popular in the public eye if you're a royal. But are we reaching a point where they need to return some fire? Well, sometimes the royal family need good advice. Their protection officer quite often give good advice and they listen. In this case, I don't think they should apologise. I thought they were wrong in respect of Lady Hussey. In my opinion, and a lot of people disagree, she had nothing to apologise for. I felt, and I said it either on your programme or others, they were wrong to jump to conclusion without hearing all the facts and actually interviewing Lady Hussey. But we are where we are now. I just hope that doesn't set a precedent, because it would be wrong. And yes, would I invite them to the coronation? Certainly not. From a security point of view, it would all about them. And unfortunately, they have caused, as I've said in The Telegraph fairly recently, in my opinion, there are nutters out there who could cause harm to not only the royal family, but also those in America. The fixated threat assessment of the FBI and CIA, and I went to Los Angeles years ago to discuss this, there are literally thousands in America. They're doing nothing to support their safety or their cause. They are completely... Their moral compass has gone ski whiff in my well, opinion. Well, I don't think... I mean, look, I don't, I don't think anyone... So, so to anyone. I don't wish any harm on any of the people involved in this. Harry, Meghan, any of the royal family, none of them. Uh, absolutely clear yeah, about but they, that. They're going to get harm if they carry on like this. Well, I just think... I think all they of it is... Yeah, harm. I agree. I think all of it is incendiary. And this book that's coming out will be even more incendiary and pour even more fuel on the fire. But my, my question about the coronation, I've got to be honest... Why would two people who despise the monarchy and everything it stands for, who think that the royal family are a bunch of racists, why on earth would they turn up at the coronation? Why would they? I'll tell you why. Because that's where the money is. If they're seen at the coronation, next to all the major royal players, that is gold dust for their next Netflix series. And they're right there is the hypocrisy that underpins everything these two do. Got to leave it there. A good debate. Natalie, thank you very much indeed. Di, thank you very much.